Well, welcome to Ride is Rain Crochet. Today we were going to be working on these construction worker, firefighter um, outfits. They are really cute. The pants are pretty easy. Um, I will let you know how to do zero to three months and three to six months. So let's go ahead and get started. Fireman outfit in the zero to three months. Um, we're going to start the pattern. All the stitches are going to be the same. It's just going to be a hook that we use. It's going to be a different size. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to start with the boots. Now you guys can mix and match any colors that you would prefer. Um, I'm actually going to do the bottom of my boots in black, but it is really hard to see. So I don't want to do that to you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and just make the sole of the boot in yellow so that you guys can um, see the stitches and see what we're doing. And then I'll swap back to um, my standard uh, black sole for the rest of the tutorial on the boot. So what we're gonna do is, like I said, we're gonna do a three and a half millimeter hook for the zero to three. If you guys wanted to make the three to six, um, then go ahead and jump up to a four millimeter hook. And we're gonna go ahead and start with a chain 11. Okay, and then what we're going to do in the third chain from the hook, we're going to do place three double crochets. Let me get in here a little closer. Okay, there's one. Let's make sure we're focused. Get everything right here. Two and three. Then we're going to do seven double crochets down the side. And seven. Now we want to go ahead and place in this last chain stitch, we're going to go ahead and do six double crochets. This is actually going to bring us around to the other side. And six. All right, then we're gonna go back up this side with seven double crochets. Try to tuck your tail if you can. and six, and seven. <clears throat> so when I do my work like this, I will drop that tail at some point, um, and then I can pull it nice and tight, and then I'll trim it off like that. And this, the last stitch here, we're gonna do three double crochets. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and slip stitch to the first stitch, which is this one here, not this, this is the chain up. And then we're gonna go ahead and chain one. So now we're gonna go back into the same stitch we came out of. We are going to do single crochet increase three times. So one, two, three. So it'll be six stitches. So there's two single crochets in one. There's our first, our first increase. That's two. And three. 
Then what we're going to do is we're going to do four single crochets on the side. One, and four. And then we want to do two half double crochets. One and two. Now we're going to do half double crochet increases in the next eight stitches. So two half double crochets into each stitch eight times. Okay, so that's one, two, Okay, that's seven and one more to go. Okay, then we're going to do two half double crochets standalone. So that's one, and then in the next stitch, two. We will do four single crochets. We should have three stitches left, and we do. Whenever there's a stitch that has something coming straight up out of it like that, that is going to be our chain. That is not a stitch. So we're going to increase, single crochet increase, into the next three stitches. So there's one. That's two. And three. Very nice, that's looking really good. Okay, and again, we're gonna go ahead and slip stitch here to the first single crochet. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are gonna do, we should have 40 stitches around. We're gonna chain one and we are gonna do a back post half double crochet. So the back post is coming in through the back like this. The problem that we have down in this area, the heel of the boot is that it's single crochet. So there's not a lot of girth like that has a lot of material to be able to space to go ahead and grab. The single crochets do not. So the best thing to do is we want to try to get back into that stitch that we, we came out of. Pretend like just go in through the back of the stitch and then in the next stitch, the front of the stitch, and then you can grab your yarn, pull it through and up, and pull all the way through. That was a single crochet. So let's try it one more time with a wrap. <laughs> okay, in through the back, into the front. Fold. Do not be afraid to fold your work. Uh, you know, move it around, do what you need to do. Wrap, go into the back, into the front. Pull it through, grab your yarn and pull through all three. Okay, and we'll do it again. Once we get to a spot that has a little bit more um, girth in that stem, or in the height of it, um, it will be a lot easier to do. We just got to get past these single crochets. Now, if for some reason you guys are just not getting this, you're like, it's, I can't figure it out. It's too hard. I, I'm just too much. It's too much. You can go ahead and do half double crochets all the way around on the back loop only. So you would just be putting them into this back loop right there. 
this is where the side of the boot starts to come up. And um, it, it's a little sturdier when you do it like this with the back post. So if you want, you can go ahead and just do the back loop only. But I would go ahead and do a single crochet around instead of the half double crochets. That'll be the same height by the time um, because you're not wrapping it so we don't have that going away. So I'm going to let you guys go ahead and um, get your half double crochet back post completed. You should have 40 of them when you are done. And I will meet you guys back here when you guys have completed your back post half double crochets. Okay, so I went around, I'm back to my black. So we're gonna go ahead and slip stitch and then you can do a color change here if you'd like. Um, if that's what you want for your boot, I'm doing this red. So I always tie a knot and then I pull it through. <clears throat> it's just, I've made that a habit. So that's just what I do every time. And then in this situation, what's really nice is I can cut that black and I can go ahead and tie a knot which means we go one direction, then we take the black and go through. So you're swapping over which ones you're flipping. Um, and that just assures that nothing's gonna come out. And um, I can go ahead and sew, uh, when I crochet, I'll crochet my ends in. But this also helps if I forgot or forget to uh, crochet my end in, then I can just go back through and weave it in very easily because I know there's a knot there and it doesn't affect anything either way. Um, safety, safety, safety. You don't want to do all this work and then have something, you know, happen. So that's just no good. So now we're going to do is go ahead and chain one. We're going to half double crochet back into that stitch. And what we want to do is half double crochet all the way around the, the project. So um, now is the perfect time to make sure that you have 40 stitches because we are gonna start creating the toe and we're gonna reduce and we want our stitches correct and we want um, everything to be centered. So if you're not at 40, increase in one of the stitches or do a decrease. Do not skip a stitch when it comes to being over and under stitches. You wanna fill up that space. So I will see you guys back here once you're done with your 40 half double crochets all the way around. Okay, so we slip stitch to the first stitch. We're gonna go ahead and chain one. Um, I should have mentioned this earlier. If you guys did pick up the pattern, the Etsy pattern uh, for this project with that I put the link below to it, um, these boots are not the same boots as the pattern. I really didn't like the boots in the pattern. Um, so I kind of just made up my own little thing using some bits and pieces of different things and, and um, past knowledge just to make a better looking um, firmer boot. So hopefully you guys aren't too confused. Sorry. Okay, so here what we're going to do is we're going to do 12. We're always going to go back into the stitch that we came out of. We're going to do 12 half double crochets. and 12. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do double crochet two together or a double crochet decrease. So how we do that is we're going to go ahead and wrap our yarn. We're going to do a half of a double crochet. So we're going to pull up and pull through. Then we're going to wrap again, go down, pull up, pull through two. Then we're going to go ahead and grab our yarn and pull through all three. That makes one double crochet decrease or double crochet two together. We'll do it again. So just remember you're doing a half of a double crochet. Then we go to the next stitch. We do half of the double crochet. And then we're going to wrap and pull through all three. That's two. We are going to do eight of these total. That's four. 
Go ahead and manipulate your project so that you can make your decreases as tight as possible. Um, it looks so much sharper when your stitches up top are not all stretched out. And the whole reason we're, redu we're reducing to begin with is to pull the project inward. So we wanna make sure that we're making this as tight as we possibly can. So I always like to um, do a little tug at the very end and it has just become second nature to me to do that. And um, that way that'll ensure that you have a nice, good, nice, clean, clean toe coming around here. So let me see where I'm at. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I have one more to go. And all three together. And see how we're starting to go ready. Go ahead and curve that toe in like that. Okay, so now from here we're going to do 12 half double crochets back up the side. Half double crochets. Okay, we're going to slip stitch to the first stitch. And we're going to chain one. We are now going to single crochet 11. Back in. And now we're going to do five double crochet two together. And this one gets a little, is a little tighter than the last one. So be aware of making sure that your stitches aren't stretched. and five and then 11 single crochets down the other side working our way back to the beginning all right and then of course again we're going to slip stitch and chain one Okay, now we're gonna do 11 single crochets again. Eleven. Okay, so now we want to do a single one single crochet two together. We're just going to go in, grab our yarn, pull it out, go in the other one, grab our yarn, pull it out, wrap and pull through all three. That's a single crochet decrease or a single crochet two together. Then we're going to do just a standalone single crochet right in that tip of the, this should be the middle of the boot, and then a single crochet decrease in the next stitch. Make sure we're nice and tight. And then we're going to single crochet 11 back up to the beginning. And 11. Very, very nice. Okay, now we're, we can bring in another color if that's what we would like to do. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring in my yellow, my safety yellow. 
And again, I went ahead and tied my knot. I will slip into the first stitch, grab my yellow and pull through both. Okay, and I can chain one to lock that in. Let's go ahead and trim this. And I'm gonna tie my knot. So see the yellow goes in, then the red goes into the center. We'll grab this back up again. Okay, so I want to do chain two. So I already chained one to lock it. So let's do a second chain. And let's go ahead and just single crochet. Um, or I'm sorry, let's go ahead and double crochet all the way around. And we should have 25 stitches now. And we are going to actually have 25 stitches for quite a few rounds here. So It's okay, just fold your project. Don't, don't worry about what's going on on the left or the right or underneath you. Just get that stitch that you're working in is what you wanna be focusing on. And then it will help you make sure that you have a nice, tight, tensioned pro project. And something else too, if you guys are ever doing, I say this in most of my videos, if you're ever making boots, shoes, uh, feet, arms, do them both in the same sitting. Make sure you have enough time set aside to get them both done. Um, you have a tendency to come back after you take a break and your ten tension changes. And you will be very, very stressed and very disappointed when you do all this work and one boot um, or leg or whatever, ear or whatever it might be, is bigger than the other one or smaller than whatever. They're not going to, they just don't match because your tension changes so much. And especially when you're working with some, something that you want a lot of attention on, it's not like a blanket that will like self-adjust as it's, as it's worked. And so this is just super important to try to get it done. So I'm going to slip stitch. I'm going to change color again because um, I'm doing the fireman boot and I just want that little bit of a, I just want that like safety color in there. I'm going to go back to black. And I know that it's very difficult to for you guys to see black, um, but what we're we're doing here is is going to be very simple. So it's not something that you guys are going to need to have to see how to do a back post, double crochet, or anything like that. And I'm going to tie again. All right. So what we want to do now is we want to do if you change color or not, it doesn't make a difference. We want to do eight rows of single crochet i will we're still going to have 25 stitches and we're going to go around here eight times slip stitching to the first chaining one and starting again i will meet you guys back here when you guys have got a lot higher um boot and then we can work on just finishing off the top okay see you in a little bit okay so we made it around okay so now we're going to go into, uh, we slip stitch, we chained one. We are now going to do um, half double crochets. First, we want to make sure that you are in the center of the boot. So fold your boot down this seam and make sure that you are on the center. I had to slip stitch over three to get to the center of my boot. But we want to make sure that this is where we are starting off at. Okay, and then from the center of the boot, chain one, we're going to go back into the same stitch and we're going to half double crochet five times. Four, 
five. Let's chain four. One, two, three, four. Skip four. One, two, three, four. And half double crochet in the fifth stitch. Skipped four. Now we're going to have a total of nine half double crochets. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. I'm going to go ahead and chain four. Skip four, one, two, three, four, and half double crochet in the remaining three stitches. Man, I just keep getting caught here. Okay, and we'll go ahead and slip stitch. Okay, chain one. And then we are going to half double crochet around when we get here. Okay, I'm sorry, not half double crochet. We're gonna single crochet around. So we're gonna go right back into the uh, stitch we came out of. And we're gonna single crochet all the way to our chain space. Once we are in our chain space, we're going to go ahead and single crochet six. This is our last round um, of this boot. So usually there is a stitch that, oh man, I know you guys can't see this at all. I am so sorry. Anyway, you guys are going to get the just. There's usually a stitch right here after the chain space that you need to go into. It is not necessary to get that. If you don't get that, it's not a big deal um, because it is the final stitch. So our stitch count isn't making any difference at all. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I know that this black is terrible. We're back to the chain space, so I'm going to go ahead and do six again. And then we're just going to finish off the round with single crochets. And slip stitch. And go ahead and sew in your ends and there is your first boot is done so typically what I do is I take a uh, a shopping bag like a plastic shopping bag and what I'll do is get this down in here in this toe and what it'll do I need a bigger bag but what it'll do is it'll really prop that toe out real nice so it's nice and round and now we have our boot. And again, I apologize about the coloring. Um, I, um, but it was only a small portion that you guys couldn't see. So, okay, so that's how you guys need to do it. Go ahead and um, whatever you guys ended up counting to get your straps, make sure you jot that down. So on your second boot, you're doing the same thing. And we'll see you guys back here for, um, oh, I think we're moving to pants. Okay. Okay. Well, you guys should have your boots done by now, and I hope everything went smoothly. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to our pants. Um, with the construction worker, I used a brown um, or a toasted almond. Um, but for the fireman, of course, I'm going to go with red. And um, for the zero to three months, um, we are going to be using a four millimeter hook. If you guys want to do the three to six month, then use a five millimeter hook. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with a chain of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
Second chain from the hook, we're going to single crochet all the way down. So we should have six stitches. And six, chain one and turn. Okay, so now what we're gonna be doing is, this is the banding around the pants. So we want to make it a stretchy banding. So if you guys have done this before, you know exactly what we're supposed to be doing. Um, we're going to only crochet in the back loop only. This is going to give this a little bit of a spring to it. And we are going to go all the way to the end with back loop only six stitches. and chain one and turn. So do you see how it kind of overlaps like that? That's what becomes the stretchy part of the elastic, we're gonna call it the elastic, of the waistband. So what we need to do is we need to do the six stitches. We need to make 55 rows of these stitches. Once you get two together, I call it a cluster. Let me show you what that looks like real quick. So that way it makes it easier to count um, all of your rows once you can get a cluster together. And chain one, okay. So this right here is considered a cluster. Two together is a cluster. That'd be on this side, the wrong side. On the right side, this is the cluster. So this would be one, and there's a cluster, so that would be two more. So when you guys are counting, you guys can count 27 clusters plus this one at the bottom. Um, so now you've just got quite a ways to go. Something else that's another little um, uh, helpful hint for you guys is as you go, once you get and you go back and count, and let's say you have 20 clusters, go ahead and mark that that you have 20. That way you don't have to count that anymore over and over and over again um, until we have 55 rows. So I will let you guys be on your way and um, we'll see how it goes. All right. All right, well, I now have 27 of these little clusters. See, here's where I stopped at 20 and went ahead and put my stitch marker in. So 27 clusters. So we're actually at 54 stitches, uh, or rows, I'm sorry, so I need to do one more row. So I'm going to go ahead and chain one and turn my work, and let's finish up this one last row to make 55 stitches. All right, so from here now what we're going to do is we're going to fold this in half, and we are going to connect these two pieces together. So I go ahead and chain one. And um, what I like to do is I like to do the back loop of the one that's closest to me and then the chain base and we'll slip stitch there. This helps give it a little bit of a, still a little bouncy and you don't see it as much. Um, four, there's five, and on the sixth one, I'm going to go ahead and just go through both because it doesn't really make a difference on that one. Whoops. Get that through there. Go ahead and chain one. And now we can flip our work. That'll be the wrong side. Now I left this right here. I always leave this telltale laid. Not that you can tuck it when you're slip stitching anyway. But then when I weave this in, I can grab whatever I don't like right there um, and go ahead and get that cinched up um, just in case there isn't a border. This one does have one, but I'm just giving you guys little pointers. Okay, so we have the chain one space now what we're going to do is we're going to go around and we're going to single crochet in each one of these spots so that we have a total of 50 
six stitches. So now is the time to make sure when we get all the way back around that we have 56 stitches. And I will meet you guys back at the beginning with a total of 56. Okay, so I'm at 54 stitches, 54, 55, and here we go. We're going to make that 56. Okay. Now, if for some reason you guys wanted your waistband to be a different color than your pants, make sure that you are doing this one row of single crochet in the same color as the waistband. And then you can tie your new color into somewhere nice and clean um, and let all of this jagged where it's not, where it catches differently, be in the same color. Always do this. Um, when you're going to transition to another color, you really want to transition on top of a stitch, not on the side. Just a little pointer for some, any time in the future. Um, okay, so go ahead and let's slip stitch. Here we are. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and chain two. And we want to do, whoops, I'm going to fix this actually, because we're going to be working back loop only. So let's slip stitch to the back loop. It doesn't always say this, but it sure makes it a lot cleaner look across the board. Okay, so chain two, and we want to do a double crochet in each stitch around um, for a total, again, still of 56 stitches in the back loop only. So you're going to split that stitch in half. And what that's going to do is put a lively little decorative line um, right here at the end of the waistband going onto the body and the pant legs. So I'm going to go ahead and meet you guys back here once you do your back loop only double crochets. And I'll see you in a minute. Okay, very lovely. See how I made that nice little decorative line right there? So now what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch to the top to the first stitch, chain two. We are now going to proceed to do seven rows of double crochets connecting the same way. Not back loop. This is regular both loops. Um, seven rows on top of this. Still, we are still having 56 stitches. So now we're making the butt part of the, the pants. So slip stitch, chain two, always double crochet back in to the same stitch. And we will see you in seven rows. All right, so we made it around. We should have eight row, rows total of double crochets. The first rows are back loop only, and then the seven rows. Now we're gonna move on to the legs. So let's chain two, and we wanna double crochet 27 stitches. Okay, there's 25, 26, and 27. And what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch to the first double crochet of the leg. So we're really going to be folding this over. Just squish it up and slip stitch into that first double crochet. We just don't want that um, slip stitch to be stretched at all. <clears throat> so now from here, we're going to do five rows of double crochets for the leg. So this one first one is not counting, or you're going to have a total of six, whichever way you want to say, uh, want to count it or think of it as, but we're doing five more rows um, of double crochets, and I will meet you guys back here at the end of that, and we'll swap out some colors. All right, so we are back now. We've got our uh, five rows completed, and I'm going to go ahead and bring in my safety color, and we're just going to do a half of a slip stitch. Just get it in there, and we'll bring that yellow yarn through. So um, then let's go ahead and just lock it. And then what I like to do is to go ahead and cut this just like we did on the boots. And this way I can go ahead and just uh, double crochet that in. So what you guys are going to do now is you're going to go ahead and do um, one round. If you guys are doing colors like this, um, this is one 
one one and then two rounds of your main color and fasten off so um i will leave you guys to this and then when we come back i'm going to show you guys how to get joined up for our uh, second pant leg and you guys are really just about done the pants are pretty simple and then we can work on um our suspenders and um and go from there all right good luck guys Okay, so we finished with our five rounds. We're going to go ahead and pull. <clears throat> if you guys want to do this, you're more than welcome to. It's your, your color choice. So I brought in my um, safety yellow. One row. This is double crochets. One row. Double crochet. One row. Double crochet. One row. Come back with our main color. One row of double crochets. And then we're going to go ahead and do one row of single crochets around this will tighten it up single crochets are always tighter than doubles and this will tighten up the bottom of the pant just a little bit and then once we are done we can cut our yarn and weave in our ends and um i'll show you guys how to connect the second leg and you guys are on the roll to almost being done with the pants okay let me finish this up be right back Okay, so we, <clears throat> excuse me, we got that done, and everything looks really good. Um, what we want to do now is we're going to go ahead and attach um, our yarn for our second leg. Leave quite a long tail on this. That way you can come back and flip your pants inside out and come back and sew up this crotch area where there's going to be a hole left. So we want to go ahead and skip this empty stitch and we are going to attach our yarn here and go ahead and chain up to two and we'll just bring this long tail inside of the piece until we um, that was the wrong side until we get uh, until we get the leg done and then we'll flip it inside out like I said and we can use that with our needle to just sew up anything left here in this crotch area so again, we are going to do, this is 27 stitches and there should still be one stitch left over back here. And we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did on this side. So this will be a total of five rows of red, all double crochet, a yellow, a gray, a yellow, a red, and then finish off with that single crochet. So you can see how that single crochet kind of made that taper in just a little bit. Um, and that is pretty much all that is needed to be done. We will, like I said, finish the crotch area. And then if you guys would like, and this is completely optional and up to you, if you guys would like to attach your yarn and go ahead and go around um, the outside of the ribbing here, it looks fine just like it is. We did, remember we did leave this tail so that when we tie it in, we can cinch this up a little better so it looks nicer if you do not want to trim it. I think on my last pair, I actually did run a single crochet around there. And, um, oh, actually I did not, so I didn't even notice. So, yep, that's all right, I did it on that one. So, all right, so you guys finish up the pants and um, I will see you guys back here. And from here, we're going to go ahead and work on our, um, on our suspenders. Okay. See you in a little while. All right. So with, um, we're moving on to our suspenders, uh, the zero to three months, we're using a four millimeter hook. If you are doing the three to six, use a five millimeter hook. And then what we're going to do is we are going to, this is actually quite simple. We are going to be making um, two of these. So what we want to do is go ahead and chain 52. And then what we're going to do, the third chain from the hook, we're going to come back down and do double crochets all the way back down. So I'll let you guys go ahead and get started. I'll jump in a little bit later. This is pretty simple and definitely boring to watch. So... Uh, chain 52. Okay, 52. I know the black's hard to see, which isn't a big deal. So third chain from the hook. One, two, three. We're going to go down and we are just going to double crochet 
all the way down. Go ahead and uh, sew your ends in, uh, make two of them, and then we will meet back up when we're ready to put them onto our pants. Okay, so now we're back. We've got both of our straps done. So what I have experienced with the other pair that I had made was I did do buttons. I made buttonholes. The problem is the band was really way too big. And so what I decided to do is we're going to crochet like a fake button here. And then I'm going to use Velcro and glue Velcro on one side of this so that we can adjust it um, to fit the baby where we need. Um, it was just, unless you can like have the baby handy and can measure um, and get the straps just right with the buttons, um, I don't, I just not really liking the idea because then even if you get it exactly right, then it's not always gonna fit. The pants do wear big, so that way you have um, a longer period that the baby can be in the outfit or that you can take pictures um, with the outfit. So what I made to uh, do the fake little button was I just did a magic ring and I did 10 half double crochets into the magic ring. Um, and then I just um, attached it to the first stitch and weaved in the ends and then I'm just gonna go ahead and glue that on. And then I will put it onto the pants where um, I like it and with the Velcro on it. So that way, because what's nice about using, when you use Velcro, if you use just the, the hard side, it will actually stick to the yarn by itself. So you don't have to have the backing, like the soft part of the Velcro. So it's not even necessarily has to be stuck in one exact spot. So let me get this done and I'll jump back in and show you that. All right, well, we got our finished up. So um, I went ahead and attached the suspenders to the back. I don't like, I like to glue them on. It's waterproof glue, favorite glue ever. I love it, I love it, I love it. I use it in almost every one of my videos. And then what I did was I went ahead and put, I did the Velcro, I glued the Velcro on here. This is, it's sticky Velcro, but just to double check. And what's nice about this is as you can see, it will stay in place no matter what size you need. Then you can also, if need be, uncross, and now you even have longer um, suspenders. So this makes it a little more um, sizable. You can size it differently. Um, and when you do the buttonholes, you're more than welcome to always put the buttons on if you want. But like I said, then right here's the buttons are sewn on, and it is what it is. And this way it gives it a little bit more um, flexibility on sizing. Uh, second, we don't have a baby around a button. Not if that makes any kind of a difference for you guys. Okay, so we are going to be moving on to part two, which is going to be our hat. I hope you guys are excited and things are going well. I'm excited and I will see you then. And like always, please like, share, and subscribe.